Okay, we're starting to play the game now. So any uh, tutorials we'll do, we're just going to cover units uh, and activities as they come up in the game. Um, so the first one we'll be looking at is the irregular units. The regular units, which I think I've mentioned already, have got the movement in a blue, in a orange square. Okay, they can they don't move in the normal movement phase, but they move uh, can move twice in a turn, once in their own irregular movement phase, and uh, again in the uh, non-phasing irregular movement phase. So for the opposing players' turn. Uh, the regular units also have the advantage they're not stopped by the first zone of control they enter and they can actually uh, they can actually move and they're stopped by the second one that they enter, they enter unlike most units which have to stop at the first one now since we're discussing the canal crossing on turn one the Arab commandos, they're irregular units and they also have the ability to cross the canal by paying an extra movement point. They also can ignore all zone of control of any enemy unit in the first turn. Now whether it's uh, uh, in the Barlev line or not, uh, obviously these little forts, they don't actually have zones of control as such. Now the next phase we'll be looking at is the uh, indirect fire phase. This is when your artillery can fire. Now, the thing to remember is your artillery ranges. As we discussed, artillery units have um, a yellow box around their firepower and they also have a, a range in the top left hand corner. I just remember that your ranges are double uh, in cost on the sewers map. So if you have a, a unit with a, a seven, it actually only has a range of uh, three because you round down in this occasion. So that would be three and a half rounded down to three. So you'd have a maximum range of three. Okay. On the Golan map, your actual range is the same as the range printed on the counter. The indirect fire phase is the only time your artillery can actually fire unless there's a vertical envelopment and that's when someone power drops onto the top of your hex and in that case you can fire at the power dropping unit with the uh, firepower of the artillery. Units that have fired uh, they will be marked with a fired counter. So when you're firing, what you do is you total up all your attack points from the hex that's firing to the target hex. Now remember the target hex must be a spotted. Uh, to be spotted, it must be adjacent to one of your units. Or it might, if you're at a higher elevation within four hexes on the Golan map and two hexes on the Sewers hex map you can spot from a higher location and then you look up on the indirect fire table roll your dice and get your result now you've got things like uh, neutralized or destroyed if you neutralize a unit you basically turn it over onto its back okay And that shows that it's lost its uh, ability to attack and it's lost its ability to move but it can still defend okay so if it's uh, if you throw a d you actually destroy the unit okay so it's n to neutralize it d to destroy it things to remember that a field artillery attack attacks every enemy ground unit installation and bridge in the target hex um, certain types of uh, attackers the Israeli have a Jordanian uh, indirect fire is more effective than all the Arab ones okay which is reflected on these uh, artillery factor attacking columns Okay, um, 
As I said, all factors must be totaled together for the attack and the target match may only be attacked once per indirect fire stage segment. You round the total number of factors down to the corresponding number on one of the two artillery factor rows. So if you had 14 total there, you would round down to 12 and look it up on the 12 column. Right, you roll the die uh, for every unit in the target hatch, making, making necessary modifications for terrain using the terrain effects chart, which is this little thing here. And it's got a direct fire or indirect fire columns telling you what modifiers to apply. You've also got a target size thing if you smart firing at small targets it's harder to inflict damage on them if you're firing against tank units bridges in place or in placing or any brigade size unit you add one to it which is what i've basically just said yeah these are your target type and size modifiers those three there which i've just mentioned um that'll do for those little bits